Hello, and happy Wikitree Day to you all. Um, welcome to a Sunday morning here where I am, uh, Sunday afternoon where some of you are. Uh, I don't know if it's Sunday night yet uh, in some places, but it might be. Um, and for those who are watching after the fact, welcome whatever time of day you're joining us. Um, so I'm here with Murray Maloney, um, and we are going to be talking about the Wikitree browser extension and what it is, excuse me, sorry, what it is and how you can set it up. Okay, so um, first off, uh, what is a browser extension, one might ask. So let me, um, what a browser extension does is it takes, basically, it when you install an extension, it lo when you load a web page, the extension can look at the web page. It's like a little mini pro computer program that runs. It looks at the web page and it can basically reformat things that are on the page. So one of the first uses for our browser extension was to hide ads because lots of people hate ads, right? So th there were a lot of extensions that were written just so that if it sees an ad, then it just hides that text and it shoves it away. But um, as things have developed, browser extensions can do a lot more than that. They can reorganize things on your page. So things that you might want to see uh, or have more prominence, it can, it can move to different sections of the page, or it can bold them, or it can change the format, change colors, styles, all that sort of thing. And uh, you can you can even th think of, they can do even more than that. They can actually go and retrieve, take information from the page and go and retrieve additional information to load it and show it on your on your page. And that um, that's sort of the concept of an agent. And Murray, do you want to add some some more to that concept about browser extension? Sure. So so when when the web started um, and and we were having meetings about how um, how the web was going to evolve, uh, people were talking about browsers, of course, because that's how everybody accessed the web. But um, but there were a lot of other tools out there that that were accessing the web um, like search engines etc so we came up with the term user agent which meant there's something that's going out there and acting on your behalf so the browser acts on your behalf it goes and gets a web page it lets you click on things it does all that stuff um, the 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 extensions give you increased agency they let you do more things than you could have done before because they just provide additional facility to you and, and we'll see that very soon. OK, sounds good. OK, so the question is, how do we load? How do we load these um, load up a browser extension? Uh, OK, so I, what I need to do is I need to open up. Um, I'm going to share my screen eventually here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. And uh browser extension okay just give me a sec here sorry about that and so what greg's about to show is the installation yes of, thanks of the <laughs> thank you extension. well you go ahead and do what you need to do and i'll, I'll talk you through thank you uh, very much he's about to show us the installation of the web browser extension on several different browsers now so WBE runs on Chrome, it runs on Firefox, and it runs on Safari. And, and of course, those um, those tools run on multiple platforms. So they might run be running on under Linux, they might be running under Mac OS, they might be running under a Microsoft operating system. Um, and so we have all these different configurations. And there's of course, there's also the iPad and other tablets. So there you go, Craig. Uh, Greg? OK, excellent. OK. Uh, so. What I've got loaded here is the the Wikitree free space page for the help for the Wikitree browser extension. And you can get to that. Once you've got it loaded, you can get to this page um, by clicking on the help icon at any time. And Marie Maloney, my guest here, my co-host, is, um, is, is the primary author of this page. Uh, and just like the amazing work he did on the fan chart uh, free space page, he, he started. He did this first, and then I stole him to work, do the same thing for my fan chart app. <laughs> so uh, guilty as charged there. But from this page, you can see all the different set areas, and we're going to click on installation because this is the easiest way to install it, is to go to this help page, this free space page, 
and then go to installation and then choose the browser you're in. So I'm in the Chrome browser right now. And so I just want to, now there's actually two versions. You can choose to use the stable version and that's the one I'm going to use now. Is that okay? Or are we going to do the stable or the pre stable? Right? Uh, they're, they're actually in sync today. Oh, perfect. Fantastic. Okay. Um, normally, I would recommend you use the stable version, but if you are one of the ones who like to live on the bleeding edge of technology and you don't mind if something doesn't quite work right sometimes because someone's added a new feature and it needs some more testing, then go ahead and try the preview version because you'll see the, the greatest, the latest and greatest before anyone else does. And you can also help um, the team out by finding bugs. So, but we're going to do the stable version for now. So I'm going to click on for Chrome and then it's going to automatically open up the page in the Chrome store and it says WikiTree browser extension. That's right. Um, it's got a little screenshot there. Uh, it, it says it's offered by the WikiTree apps project. So all of these things, um, the screenshot, the where it's from, uh, help to um, help to let you know that, yeah, this is the one you want. Uh, hit add to Chrome. It says it can read and change your data on all the Wikitree .com site, wikitree.com sites. And that's what we, we talked about. That's what a, bra a browser extension does is it readjusts the stuff. So this is what, what we want it to do. And it can read and modify data you copy and paste. Um, and that's important too, because the copying and pasting adds a lot of functionality as well. So we want to say yes to that. We're going to hit add extension and checking and there it is and by default it pops up the original the the settings dialog and we're going to come back to the settings dialog in a moment yes. but uh it's added there so we're going to say yes and now uh should we pin it now or should we pin it when we come back no go ahead and pin it okay so in my if you can now i zoom <laughs> If I zoom in, I zoom in on the page, but what I can't zoom in is in the top corner here, which you can't see because of that logo. So let me, I'm going to temporarily hide the WikiTree logo. Don't tell okay. anyone. <laughs> you know you're in WikiTree because of the orange background, right? We'll put it back afterwards. But um, in this top, cor top right corner, um, there's a jigsaw puzzle piece, okay? And you have to really squint hard to see that, I'm afraid. Uh, but believe me, there's a little jigsaw puzzle piece, and that gives you the extensions. Um, so you can manage the extensions. And one of the options you can do in Chrome is you can pin um, an icon for an extension. And that gives you quick access to that extension at any point in time. So I'm going to do that because that's a very helpful feature to have in Chrome. OK, so now we have the browser extension installed in Chrome. We haven't done anything with it. We've got the settings page set up and we're going to come back to what to do after that. But now I'm going to do the same thing over again in Firefox. And I don't have Firefox open yet, so I'm going to open up a copy of Firefox. Okay. I do not want to set it as the default browser. <laughs> Let me put it over here. Um, okay. And so I'm going to go to that same page that I gave to you in the link, this page here, the browser extension page in Firefox. And I'm going to click on installation and I'm going to hit stable version for Firefox. And it gives me this, a similar page, but from the Firefox store now. Browser extension by the WikiTree Apps Project. That's what we want. Add to Firefox. Yes, it's. Oh, I'm okay for you to access data. Access data. Access data. Yes, that's okay. Allow this extension. Now, this is an option. I don't usually bother about that because I don't go into private windows very often. But if you wanted to do that, you could allow that or not. Um, I'm going to click OK, and there we have it now. <coughs> Can we pin that as well? Do we know if there's pinning available? I don't see. I don't use Firefox as much, so I'm not sure about the pinning. Do you know offhand? 
Murray? I'm sorry, I don't, I don't use Firefox. Okay. Well, if there's anyone in the chat who knows if we can pin an icon of the browser extension, uh, let us know, please, because that would be useful. Um, but even if not, you can click on, if you can click on the jigsaw puzzle, then you can open up the extension that way, which does basically the same thing as clicking it on an, in the pinning uh, in Chrome. Uh, okay, so now we're at the, basically at the same page, same place we were when we installed it in Chrome. Let's now see how we install it on Safari. So again, I'm going to have to open up a copy of Safari. Uh, close that down. Close that down. Come on, Safari. Safari. And okay, let's bring Safari over here. And Safari <laughs> doesn't seem to want to go full window, but we'll see. Uh, Go to installation for Safari. And this will take me to the App Store, and which allows, so it looks slightly different, but it really is the same thing. And then I can download it to my machine. Or you could use the get. Uh, if there's a if it doesn't, if you don't have the download cloud icon, then you would use the get button. There'd be a get button. And it's free, so there will be no cost involved. This is, uh, and then we hit open. Then we have to quit and open the Safari settings to turn it on. And here we are in the Safari settings. Check here, and it's turned on. And this one, and there's the link to it up there as well. Okay. So we have it on the three main browsers. I have a Mac, so that uh, those are the three main browsers there. But we can also install it on an iPad. And uh, if you give me a sec, I'm going to set up the magic to show you my iPad screen, um, which is kind of cool. Hold on, yeah. Hold on there. So while Greg is doing that, I should also mention that that the browser extension also runs on iPhones. And oh, yes. I don't I don't run it on my iPhone and I I find it hard uh, to picture people using WikiTree on their iPhone, but apparently they do. So um so <laughs> the procedure that the procedure that Greg's gonna show you now for the iPad works equivalently for the iPhone. Okay. There we go. Can you see my map, my iPad screen? Yes. Okay. And I could make that, I could share just that screen, or is that big enough as it is right there? Uh, that'll do. That'll do? Okay. So um, I want to go to the same place in Safari. Uh, there's the browser extension page. I had it preloaded, luckily. Uh, click on installation. Then I go to for Safari. And again, it gives me, now it's taking me to the App Store. Now, you could just go to the App Store and search for the Wikitree browser extension if you want, um, which would work just as well. But um, I thought to be consistent, we'll do the same thing. And so this, the same link that works on the Mac will work on the, on the iPad as well as the iPhone. I did actually install it on my iPhone and could show it to you there, but it's the it's exact same procedure. So I hit. Uh, the download to download it. I've already because I've already loaded it once when I was testing this. Um, it doesn't. I don't see the get button. If if it I'd never loaded it before, you wouldn't see that cloud. You would see the word get, and then. But again, it does the same thing. Then I open it up. I click open. And again, you have to go to the extent the settings for Safari to turn it on. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my home screen, click on settings, uh, and I want to search for Safari settings. Safari, 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 there we go. And then extensions over here. And then there is Wikitree browser extension and I have it allow extension turned on. Um, and again, there is that still that option about allowing private browsing. So 
Uh, I'm not. Sh um, I don't usually worry about that for the WikiTree browser extension, but um, I mean, that's an option there. Uh, and there we go. You can also see that I've also got the Sourcer extension installed. Uh, okay. And now if I go to open up Safari, uh, there's the browser extension and all of the settings. Okay. So I have got a multitude of setting screens here. Murray, what do I do? <laughs> Time to dismiss. Time to dismiss. <laughs> OK, I'm going to, uh, let's see, let, well, let's move. Let's hide the iPad screen. Um, would you rather I, does it matter to you which browser I work with? No. No. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to work in Chrome, but I have access to those all through all the other ones as well. So we can, let's see, hide that. there I'm in Chrome. Okay. Here we are. Now guide us through what, what we should do and what this all means. Oh, I thought I was going to do that. Yeah, I know. I said, you, I, will you please guide us through all this? <laughs> no, no, I mean, I thought I was going to do it on my screen. Oh, oh, perfect. Oh, that's right. Yes, I can relax. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Ah, take it away, Murray. Okay, so you can see me. Okay, great. Yeah. I should, um, I should, so I should preface this. Murray probably knows. Well, I don't know for sure if he knows more than Ian about the extension because Ian's written most of this, but because er Murray's documented every aspect of it, I think Murray might know the most about the extension and all of Wikitree. No, no, no. I think I think that uh, that Ian think? knows a lot more than me. He's constantly telling me little things that I forgot ah, or, okay. or, or never knew. <laughs> okay. Um, Sorry, Ian, I didn't mean to think. Regularly have to puzzle him at, at how things work, and and uh, you know when I when I don't understand something, I'll show you show you one of those a little later, but. Okay. Anyway, so this is the this is the profile of Guillaume Kapla, and and I just want to show you this because I want to show you what it looks like without the browser extension, and then I'm going to show you versions of it with the browser extension. Okay, so okay. so we've got Guillaume here, and you can see that he has some AKA names, and you can see that he was born when he was born, and you can see when he was died, and you can see how this information is organized here. Um, and, th and we've got the profile manager information, et cetera. Over on the right, we've got some information over here uh, that's in G2G, and we've got some DNA connections, the list of his images, and there's a table of contents, which I can hide or show. And mm. there's his, his profile, and it's quite long. Wow. And there are, there are um, research notes, and there are sources. And then we get down uh, towards the bottom, and there's an acknowledgement section, and then there's comments, and and then we get down to the bottom of the comments. We've got the matches and merges, and here we've got the um, uh, the prof the what is this called? The uh, connections to famous people. Like the, the, this right, week yeah. Is centered on profiles uh, of the week, and yeah, yeah, profiles of the week. Thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's that's what that profile looks like now. Now, um, now I'm going to turn on the browser extension. So there's, I've got both uh, the, pre the preview version and the uh, um, stable version installed on my computer. I'm going to go with the preview version. Uh, okay. What the heck? Mm -mm. Can you do the other one? Uh-oh. Um, I don't know what's going on here. Uh-oh. Um, this is not expected. Oh. Is it? Okay, I'm going to stop it... sharing for a second. Yeah, I was going to say, is it screen sharing? That's Maybe. Interfering. That shouldn't be. Hmm. Okay, that worked. Uh, so now I'm going to present again. Hmm. That's very interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, scrolling through, see if there's some questions. Okay, there was a question. Well, what's a flavor yep. of the 
the browser has been installed, does it automatically update? Or do we need to reinstall most it time, periodically? Most of the time, yes. Uh, every now and then, you need to go in and do it manually. But, but for the most part, it does uh, update itself. All right, so here we have um, here we have the uh, browser extension page, but that's not what I was looking for. Uh, so we want to go back to where am I? That's not the one. Here we go. Nope, that's not the one either. Where's Guillaume? There's Guillaume. Okay, so now there's Guillaume, and the browser extension is active. And you can see that oh, you have his to share your screen. You have to share your screen oh, I'm there. Sure. I'm not sure. I thought it was. Uh, oh, entire screen. Share. There we go. Okay. Okay. There's Guillaume. All right. So now you can see that uh, this is in color. Mm. Okay, we've added some color to the screen. And, and you can see that all of the headings have a color attached to them. Nice. You can also see here that it shows nine degrees, which is distance from me, and, it, and he's my seventh great grandfather. You also notice here that there's a couple of extra things, the family group and the family timeline. And it's rearranged some things here. Okay, it's got born and died immediately, the died is immediately afterwards. Okay. And then if we skim down to the end, we can see that those connections have changed mm -hmm. and there's a few other little things so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to show you some of the settings that i've set up set up and how you use some of them and if it would just be cooperative it doesn't seem to want to be so let's go over to where was that there we go okay so access keys so one of the things one of the things that gives you agency on the browser extension is having these access keys. You can do things like open the search page, go to your recent G2G activity. You can grab the ID of the current profile with a with a uh, with an I key. You can grab the link. You can grab the URL, etc. You can jump to different places. Um, you can show your ancestors. You can show your descendants. Rather than having to click on a button, you can just just do this easily using an access key. So there's a list of keys that you can you can set up choose what you want to use. You can add a search box at the end of your profile. Um, I choose to just use the uh, help search box, but you cannot actually have a Google search box at the end as well. And I'll show you that. Hmm. The clipboard and notes, I'll show you in a moment. There's an extra watch list. Image, zoom, and magnifier. Uh, this is this is great. And there, there are uh, ac um, access keys for zoom and magnifier. These ones I like to, to leave off and only turn them on when I need them, and I'll explain why later. There's a custom style. You want to turn this on, okay? Regardless of whether you set anything in here, you want to turn it on because it's going to put a key in your editing box, and you're, you're going to be able to adjust the editor font size. You don't have to touch anything in here. Now, I have touched some things in here, as you've, as you've seen, obviously. So, for example, the background color for the headings. Now, notice here, I've set the text color to red. But my headings aren't red. My mm -hmm. headings are black. And that's because Ian has put some code in there that has, got, has done a check to see whether the contrast level is appropriate. And if it's not, it's going to make an adjustment. Um, some people like the dark mode. I don't. Uh, but lo lots of people do. The smooth scrolling is something that will show you how it works. The sticky header uh, mm -hmm. is something that will show you, show you immediately. And let's just jump. Where's Guillaume? Why do I keep losing Guillaume? Hmm. Um, there he is. Isn't that Tim? Where is Guillaume? There's Guillaume. Well, anyway, you can see it on all these pages. See how when I scroll, the wiki tree box up here just stays in place. Ah. I don't lose it. So that's, that's a nice feature to have. It is. Um, uh, I I I like the sticky header. I, this is Alesha's visited links. I don't use that one. I do use the one in custom style, but I just set it to black. I, I don't want visited links highlight, uh, highlighting it. Category display, you can move the categories from the bottom of the page up to the top. 
So I put mine above the bi biography, but you can put it below the biography or in the side column. You can also have a border around it and you can have it displayed either as a list or as a block. Changing the family lists is really cool. And, and I'm going to show you that right now. So we're going to move mm -hmm. the family list to the right hand column. We're going to make it vertical and we're going to add some information. And now let's go find Guillaume again. I think he's in the same, the there same is. group. Isn't he? So there's Guillaume. We're going to refresh the page. And yeah, that's one thing work. you have to refresh the page if you make a change because it doesn't do it on the fly. You have to reload it for it to. Yes. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Yeah. Okay. So you see now it moved the family relationship over to the side. And it's put in some information here. And uh, uh, this is something that was just added. Um, mm -hmm. And um, that was added by Riel. So. Um, so Guillaume was when Guillaume was born, his father was 36 years old and his mother was about 40. He had a brother who was born about 16 years before him. OK, so you can see that, that we've moved everything over to the right hand side. Now our space over here only has uh, his, his birth and death date. And we've got all this information over here. And that's all very handy. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to set it back now. Hmm. Okay, I wonder why it's doing that. So, I'm going to undo that. I Actually, uh, that's my preferred one, the right-hand yeah. vertical list. Now, then there's collapsible descendants tree. So, let me jump back, and we'll show you Guillaume. Now, I'm going to use um, I could, my, my access keys, and I'm going to use D. So D for descendants, and that didn't work for some reason. Oops. Oh, it's, it was building. It is, it is working, but it's, it's slow. In there. Not sure why I'm so slow today. Uh, maybe I should turn a few <laughs> it things It is Sunday. Off. <laughs> Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah. There we go. So collapsible descendants tree. So this is kind of cool. I can I can look yeah. at the list of descendants and I can focus in on the, who I want to focus in on and ignore all the others. So that's kind of a nice feature. That is because the descendants on the regular page without the extension are not collapsible at all, right? That's right. Uh, distance and relationship. You saw that we we had the uh, the degrees and the. Um, and the relationship, family group and family timeline are no oh, wrong wrong place. <laughs> so here, so here is the family group. That was a button that's been added underneath, and so you can see the parents and the siblings and the children. And the family timeline gives us a breakdown of the series of events in in Guillaume's life: the birth of his parents, the, the his his brother's birth, his own birth. Uh, and the, uh, the birth of his wife and etc. Whoops. Oh yeah, dismiss those with an escape key. No, that didn't work. Let's do that instead. Okay, so now we'll go back over here. All right, then we get to the printer friendly bio, but before we do that, I need to show you something else. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna press this reading mode button, even though I haven't shown you the readability options yet. So readability mode, change that. And actually, I'm going to refresh because I want that over there. Whoops. Now what happened? OK, so we're in reading mode. Now, what reading mode has done is it's removed a bunch of stuff from the page. So all the tabs underneath, underneath here are gone. Right? All this stuff that was over here is gone. And we scroll down, we see the the profile, but when we get down to the research notes and the sources, they've been collapsed. So I can open those up and look at them. 
and hide them away. And we can see this cool little thing, what links here. And this tells me all the places and people that have links to Guillaume. And so there's a bunch of space pages that mention him. Those are on the right. And then a bunch of individual people who have mentions of Guillaume in their page. But you see, this really changes how we look at this page. It's spread it out. And so that's pretty nice. Now, mm. I did that before I showed you the print. So what I'm going to do now with my, with my key is I'm going to use Command P. And we're going to go to print. And, and that didn't work, huh? So this happened before on this profile. So I'm going to switch to a different profile. I'm going to show you Henry's. So there's Henry's profile. And we're going to do a commit. Oh, it's happened here too. What's going on? Hmm. Okay, well, folks, this usually works. Sorry do about you need that. To there was no printer selected, Murray. If you print, if you select a printer, do you think that might? Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. um, that's not liking reading mode for some reason. Anyway, so we get we get the um, we get the profile of Henry, and it's been formatted to fit the page. We got some pictures in here. Okay. Now let's go back, and we're going to look at the readability options. So with reading mode, you can you can set your toggle here so that you have that toggle at the top of the page, and you can adjust some list spacing. You can adjust, make some adjustments about how the sources section should be handled. I've decided that I always want the sources section collapsed, and that I always want the the, the uh, to bold the, the the beginning of the sources. I want uh, to re I don't want to remove break tags. Uh, I want to indent. Uh, how to deal with my inline citations. Um, how to deal with the right section. So I want to collapse the page if it's empty. If the right section is empty, I want, to, I, want, I want the page to spread out wide. Um, I want to hide status blocks in reading mode. I can make that always. I can make that never. Right? So there's lots of things I can hide or set my choices about what, what I'm going to place. Now, you can see here I set the bottom section so that I can hide the comments and memories. I can hide the connections. I can hide the categories. And I chose that I don't want to hide custom background images. So there's a bunch of things in here that you can you can set up. The printer friendly bio that you have some choices um, whether whether to apply formatting directly using the browser's print option. So that allowed me to use the command P. Um, adding a link to the profile menu, I chose not to do that, but you can. Uh, printing the vitals, I I. I I chose to go ahead and print those, et cetera. So, so there's things that you can you can set up choices about. There's your sort theme people, which was at the bottom. Um, now we're going to get, or I'm going to skip all the editing stuff. I don't want to deal with that today and do that tomorrow. There's a bunch <laughs> of community stuff. Um, confirm your thank you. So sometimes when you press thank you, you didn't really mean to. And this, this will just throw up a box and um, ask you whether you really intended to. Here's some things that you can uh, goss, um, gussy up your G to G options. Hide your contributions. When you look at your at your contributions, um, sometimes you just don't want to see yours. You want to see what everybody else did on page. Sorting your badges. Um, now, your anniversaries table, your category filters, your category table. So I'm going to show you some of that. But that's not the one I wanted. And I don't want Henry. So we're going to cancel that. So here's a category page. This is a category that Guillaume is a member of, and we would know that if we looked down here and we could see that he's a member of a variety of categories. So we're going to look at the per se category. And in this category, we can ask, well, who's unconnected? And we can see that there are four people who are unconnected. Oh, that's interesting. Who's orphaned? Okay, there's a few people that are orphaned. Who's missing parents? Well, yeah, some few people are missing parents. Well, what about if we wanted to know some combination mm. of those? Ah, look at that. Is there, that, is there anybody that's orphaned and missing a parent? Apparently not. <laughs> so we should. I should just clarify. Orphan means it doesn't have a profile manager. Right. 
because an orphan also doesn't have parents. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, so you've got, you can and or, and you can also or them. So if, if somebody is unconnected and, uh, or missing a parent. Okay. That is very cool. That's now, new. We can also add a filter in here. And so let's get rid of, get rid of those two. And we're going to say less than 1700. So these are all the people who were, who have a date that's earlier than 1700. We can also say greater than 1700 and we get all the people who are later than 1700. Okay. So all that's pretty cool. But now let's do a table. That's going to take a second. Mm. Oh, look, we have a table of the same list and we've got this added feature here. This, wow, look at that. We can see about that person, who the parents are, who the siblings, etc. Okay, and we can dismiss that. And we can also see that it's an open profile. So that's all useful information. But now let's look at this. Oh, look, only unconnected. There are four people <laughs> who are unconnected. And that actually matches up with the same four unconnected people in the list. Now you see these two sets of buttons operate independently. One works on the table, one works on the list. Mm -hmm. So that's all pretty cool. Now that's let's cool. look at the anniversaries table. So actually, oops, format. there we go. So when you, when you enable this feature, your anniversaries list comes up in a tabular format and you've got a filter. And let's see, where's my other list? <laughs> okay, let's look at the connection finder. Oh, no, that's not what I want. I want, that's my connections. Your connections. What I want yeah. is, here's Henry. And let's look connections at connection to me. To me. Okay. So here's how Henry is connected to me. That's pretty clear, real easy. But how about we look at a table of that? Hmm. Well, here's that same information. And I've got, again, this cool table that I can't dismiss with my escape key. <laughs> um, and you also get some additional information here. So this explains how, what my relationship is. And here we get a chart of a list of the, the people uh, going down. Now, th this is useful when you've got a direct line and you, you uh, want to make a submission to, um, uh, to a society to show your, um, show your yeah, line. Of yeah. All right. Then we've got, uh, my connections. So there's my connections and in the ministry, so I can look at my missing connections. Now there's something, this was reported yesterday. There's something missing here, um, mm. which we think is a, a, a server malfunction that's just been happening in the last day or so. Uh, so I don't know what's going on, but normally that would tell you um, uh, some information about your siblings and your children and your spouses. It would give the number of, uh, of information. Anyway, so this is your table missing uh, to help you find missing people. And you can look in here and you can get, get your, get your information there. Um, now there's a, oh yeah, usability options. So I've got to point this one out to you. Go so down, way down here, your usability tweaks. So there's one here to put your focus in the first name field. When you're adding a new person, you just mm -hmm. have it pop into the first name field. I don't use it um, because I'm typically using Sourcer. Um, but sometimes some people find that useful. Here you can, um, if you want to, when you do an add of a person, you can have it open in the same tab or have it uh, naturally opens in a, a second tab. You can replace the words add, remove, replace with add, remove, and connect. You can remember the height of your editor box. Um, but here's the one I like. Uh, add a button at the, at the bottom of the search page. 
Um, so you can grab. The, so if you've done a search and you didn't get the results you're looking for, and now so now you want to create the person, you can just grab the information that you put into the search, and it'll carry that over so that you can plug it in to your new ad, to your ad person, and add a link to only show the active members in the search page. That's a that's another new one. And um, anyway, those are the only things I use in there. Now here, uh, add distant relationship to, a column to the watch list and surname page, and it also adds filters to wiki tables. So um, there's a lot of wiki tables on on WikiTree, obviously, and not all of them have the sort of sortability turned on, uh, that, which usually requires you to add a class. This adding this feature will enable that. All right, so I've gone through quickly. Um, I think most of the things. Oh, oh, and I, I know what I haven't done. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> we do done. have some questions, so if we have yep. time for some questions later, that's great. Yep, we will get to that in just a mm -hmm. moment. Sure. But I wanted yeah, no to, I need to show you. I need to show you this. Okay. Oh. So remember, remember, I mentioned that there was um, a feature that I like to leave disabled. But yes. sometimes I turn on. So, mm -hmm. so we're going to show you, first of all, I'm going to turn on the zoom feature. So zoom in place is now enabled and I can zoom in place. That's kind of uh, cool. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to turn on the magnifier. Okay. So now I've got a magnifier and look at that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Now I'm going to turn off the magnifier. Whoops. Ooh. Ooh. And I'm going to use that little button in the bottom corner. And I can little get button. down. I can get this little pop up and I can increase the size of that. Now, this is a ship that um, my uncle Henry worked on. Uh, oh, there, are, there are three ships we, I was able to find pictures of that uncle Henry worked on. And um, but there, there's no information where in the, in the source where I found this image, there's no information about who these individual people are. Uh, I think this is a pretty cool picture. Uh, look mm -hmm. at this cute guy here. Uh -huh. Right now, if, if I were to choose somebody who might be my uncle, <gasps> oops, what did I do there? Darn. Oh, no. there we go. I would guess that that's him with the, with the pipe in his mouth there, but I, I can't be sure of that. And that's a funny thing that happens sometimes. Huh, interesting. Yeah. So do you know your uncle's in that picture? I don't know that he's in that picture. Oh. If if he was in that picture, that I think that might be him. But oh. these are these are just pictures of the boats that I found. Oh neat. And th this was actually um so Betsy, Betsy invited me on to one of her sessions, and, and she asked me to show a profile. And this is the profile that I showed. And I commented on the fact that I didn't really know much about Henry. Mm -hmm. And she encouraged me. So I went out and did some searching, and I found found these images. And so I really encourage people to, um, if you're, especially if you, you're a newcomer to Wikitree, you should, you should uh, check out Betsy's sessions. Mm-hmm. All right. That's so I cool. think I've gone through rather quickly. I, I appreciate um, mm -hmm. the, the features of uh, Wikitree browser extension, not in editing mode. So editing mode is something that we'll discuss uh, at, at noon. Mm -hmm. And I'll go through all, a lot of the features in editing mode. And so now you have some questions for me, please. We do have some questions. <clears throat> and some of them, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Some of them answered along the way, but I like to just repeat them because not everyone can follow the live chat while we're going through this. Um, so June asked, uh, is there a way to allow it us to use the browser extension in incognito mode. And that was the option. Remember when we were, we were installing it, it asks, you know, um, it yes. asks, you know, for, for private browsing. Private browsing is just another way of saying incognito mode. So yes, yeah. you can turn that on if you want. Okay. Yeah, I'm, and, and, but I'm not sure why you would. Um, so, mm -hmm. so, you know, in our interface with Wikitree, um, I have to say that, that I've been really impressed. I, I so a year ago, right around today, I, mm -hmm. I was on the the, um, the Discord party, and I'd been following, you know, a lot of talk about WikiTree apps, but I didn't have any WikiTree apps at that point, and because uh, I'm on Safari, and a lot of these right. things didn't work on Safari. Um, 
And I was a little nervous about, you know, should I install a browser extension? Because you, you hear a lot of bad things about browser extensions, <laughs> um, about their safety. So one of the things I can say about, about the Wikitree browser extension is the only, the only domain that it, it accesses are Wikitree domains. It mm -hmm. will not go to any other domain. It will not access pages in other domains. It only looks at Wikitree pages. It only works on Wikitree pages. Um, and it only copies and pastes um, on Wikitree pages. <laughs> and the Wikitree API is quite religious about protecting our privacy. Um, there's a feature of the Wikitree API, uh, sorry, of the web browser extension, which is the CC7 changes. Mm -hmm. and, right. and when you use CC7 changes, um, it, it will not get your, um, well, it requires you to log into the app server to get information about your private, um, your private profiles. And, and there was no way around that. Uh, yeah. uh, Ian, Ian couldn't get that additional information unless you logged in. And so he's using your credentials or basically you're using your credentials to, mm -hmm. um, to assign to the wiki tree browser extension agency to, to perform some tasks for you. Right. Okay, next question. Okay, next question. Uh, is there a way to sync the settings between machines and our browsers? Well, there isn't a way to sync, but what there is, let me just show you. Mm -hmm. Because actually, this was on my list of things I was supposed to show you, but it's not going to let me for some reason. Oh, there we go. Oh, there so here's this button mm -hmm. right up here. And you can do settings and data backup. And so you can back up all your options, and you can mm -hmm. also back up your data. Now, they're, they're two different things, mm. your data and your options. Um, your, your options are the, 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 uh, the, the feature sets that we've been looking at and, and what you've turned on, et cetera. Your data is stuff like what's in your, um, which I didn't hit on the clipboard and the, um, and the notepad. And the are notes. we covering that in the next hour? Or? Yes. Okay. Uh, actually, I, I guess I was supposed to do it now, but, um, but I didn't. So okay. here's here's your notes, and th so this is a place where you can just gather information that you want, and and, and I've gathered some information that I'm going to use in an hour that, that I'm going to when I create a profile. Uh, but for example, here I've got you know these are these are things that um, information that I want to keep handy, but I, I'm not planning on pasting in um, to a lot of profiles. Whereas my clipboard, um, for example, I have stuff that I'm going to paste into profiles. Hmm. Okay. These are. Oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting distinction between the two groups. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's also in terms of how it functions. I mean, I can, I can double click on that and paste it into something. Whereas with the notes, I can't do that. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. And, and then there's also the extra watch list. This allows you to follow profiles that aren't on your watch list but you can see whether there've been changes and, and when the most recent changes were done on those. Right. Okay. So the, exactly. the other, yeah, the, the only other thing that's sort of related to that Debbie is when I installed, and I don't know if it's just because of, um, when I installed it on Safari, the, it asked if I want <clears throat> to install that app on all my Apple devices. So it knew it knows your Apple ID. Like if you're, um, if we're talking Mac, it knows your Apple ID. And so, if you install it on one machine, it gives you the option to install it on all of your other machines. So that's as close to that as you can get in that regard. Um, By the way, no, here's, smooth, here's smooth scrolling. So if I click on this, oh. it's going to smooth scroll up to the top rather than jump. Oh, do that again. Okay. Normally, oh, okay. normally that would have just jumped to the top. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so Maria asks about when you ask, talk about the access key, what keys are you pressing? And so I gave her a link to, um, to the, uh, it, in, it's actually in the help menu. Yep. And let me just put that, I'll put that link back in, right back in again. And actually I've given you the, it's in the uh, Wikitree browser extension access keys area. So basically, okay. if you're on a PC, it's Shift, Alt, and the letter. Mm -hmm. And if you're on a Mac, it's Control, 
opt in the letter. Now, it turns out that the alt key and the opt key are the same key. <laughs> it's just that on a PC, it's called alt, and on a Mac, it's called opt. As but in option. fact, on a Mac, it has, it has both labels on it. It says alt and opt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jay asks, will the settings link if I jump back and forth between the stable and the preview versions? So, uh, no. So you, you have to keep you have to keep two distinct set uh, set of settings. Mm -hmm. and note that yeah. no, they won't stay in sync. You you've got to keep them separate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Ian, that's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're two. They they treated as two different things, aren't they? Yeah. Um, what uh, Nan Nanette asks about uh, what links here is that only available in reading mode? You showed us that in reading mode, but is it available any place else? It's, it's, it's always available on the profile. It, as long as you've enabled it, it, it's always available. And in addition, you can have what links here um, on your on your find menu. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I think this is the last question here. Do others who come to these pages see the changes that we make, or are they only those with the Wikitree browser extension? I'm not so sure I understand I, the question. Okay, so I think I think um, what Gina is saying, if we make these changes, and so the page looks different to us, does it look different to other people now because of the changes we've made? And Ian, I think an answered the changes you make are personal for what you see for your browser right now, this moment. The actual default page is still on the Wikitree server, and is be is being served up, and ten different people could be looking at the profile, and they see ten different things if they have de ten different settings in their browser extension. Exactly. Okay. So, if you if you've changed some profile some settings and like changed font colors and what and it makes it really ugly, you haven't wrecked ruined it for anyone else, just for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um. But again, I didn't realize that Ian put some logic in there to sort of help protect you from yourself in that regard. Yeah, especially with the colors. Yeah, that's that's neat. Uh, so you now, see there, see it's black, right? It's black on black on base. Yes. Yeah, that's right. And you didn't choose black; you chose red or something, right? I chose red, and and, and I did that on purpose because uh, Ian had explained to me how he 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 had incorporated the accessibility features. Mm -hmm. So, so if we actually, if we go past, let's see. Um, oh no, I guess. Oh, there we are. Sources. So we have we have very very few sources on this page, but the one of the important ones is the web web accessibility guidelines and the web and contrast checker. And basically, um, Ian, Ian took the information from this contrast checker, or or he. Uh, or from the web accessibility guidelines um, and, and ba basically made it work the way that the, the contrast checker would want it to work. Right. Okay. So Gina ha was wondering why the, the images were not showing on the right side like they normally do. And I think the confusion was that because you um, probably posted those images somewhere else to a free space page, right? That is correct. I, ha I now have um, my own image archive. Mm -hmm. And so I, I put uh, I put images into my archive and then I attached them to, to pages. And it's a trick I learned working on the browser extension because if you'll notice on the browser extension, although there are plenty of screenshots, there is only one image on the right hand side because for some strange reason, if you want to have an image here, it has mm -hmm. to appear here, which is something that I don't like. And I wish right. somebody would change that mm -hmm. um, so that we could make the images on the right hand side just not be there. We don't need them. Yeah. If you're in, yeah. That's but great. With your, with your readability options, you can make those images um, disappear from all, you know, anytime you're looking at a page, it doesn't have to be just in reading mode. So let's just go quickly look at that. Um, let's see, profile. Oops. In my readability options, where is it? Um, <laughs> right section, hide popular images. So I've got it set for reading uh -huh. mode, but you can have it always. 
always just hide. Don't put, just don't put those images and make them. And and that you know that's that gets me to you know you want to, um, in my view, you want to incorporate those images into the page. You want to mm -hmm. say something about them, not just leave them hanging on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. Generally, yeah. Well, that sounds great. Um, now, there's even more goodness about the Wikitree browser extension that we're going to delve into in an hour from now. Um, so I encourage everyone to come back and um, join us at noon Eastern time or later. Um, I should have had my schedule up here to let us know what the UTC of that is. Um, is it four or the, five? The, UT, the UTC is, is one hour and four minutes from now. <laughs> okay, there we go. One hour and four minutes from now. Perfect. <laughs> um, so please rejoin Murray and myself in one hour and four minutes. Um, but stay tuned uh, because immediately, as soon as we sign off from here um, at 11 o'clock or in four minutes, in exactly four minutes or maybe three and a half minutes, uh, Kay Knight will be my guest and we will be delving into BioCheck. So you've got an hour to install the Wikitree browser extension if you don't already have it installed or if you do have it installed, play with some of those settings that Murray just showed you and then come back in an hour and three minutes now and learn even more about it. So thank and you very much. And bring lots more questions. And bring lots more questions. That's right. Yeah. Well, Murray, this was wonderful. You did a great job there showing showing that. And I hope thank my you. whirlwind tour of how to install it in four different ways uh, was helpful for yeah, people. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> it actually worked. Wow. <laughs> Um, anyways, we'll see you all in a bit, in an hour and uh, three minutes now. Take care.